Notice World. Number one, so bear with me. From the temple, overlooking Joshua Tree, Southern California High Desert. This is originally going to be a show where I had guests and things, but uh, because of the disease, we're waiting it out a little bit. But I got a vaccination yesterday. Step one. So there is hope. At least for a minute, anyways, right? So please uh, subscribe here. I think that's important and it's uh, good for your karma. Even if you hate it, subscribe to it. And uh, for now, I'm illustrating storytelling. And uh, there will be no, no structure to this, even once I start having guests and keeping it free for them pretty much, otherwise it would get boring, I think. I hope you like it, and thank you for coming here. Otis World, number one. I made a phone call one day, because I heard, uh, I heard a radio program going on about a girl who lived in a small farm town, uh, you know, somewhere in the corn belt. And uh, this girl uh, started misbehaving at school and her grades were slipping and she started sassing back at her ma and pa. Uh, they were up in arms on what to do about this daughter who was starting uh, to rebel a little bit, you know, and a little bit more as time went by, she got just a little more sassy in her pants. So they called down to the church and asked the local preacher what in hell could be going on. And the preacher said, well, what you just said is probably most likely the answer. What in hell? Hell being the key word could be going on. And he explained to the ma and the pa, it sounded like a classic case of demon possession of their daughter. Now, he didn't really know what to do because he was just a small town preacher, so he uh, contacted the, you know, the the exorcist somewhere else, some other, I don't know where the hell it was from, but but uh, that's the guy that was on the radio, the exorcist, and uh, he talked about the emergency of how he had to get down there and, you know, kick the dick off of Satan and give him two black eyes and throw him back down to hell. And, uh, I think I'll just state that maybe Maybe Satan was a lady, just so we don't offend anybody. And uh, so he smacked the tits off of Satan and threw her back down to the tits of hell where she spurted from. And every other thing in between, the man and the lady, Satan, to cover all bases. And uh, so uh, he said, listen, I'll be down there as soon as I can to, uh, Take care of this Satan dilemma we got going on. That's uh, getting a grip on your daughter's soul. So they sat down and waited for him. And he went out to the garage. To He got all his exorcist junk together, you know. And went out to the car and it wouldn't start. It, it, wouldn't, it had dead battery. So he... Uh, he had a, you know, go down to parts store and everything and get a battery and then put it in and everything. And while he's doing that, 
Satan is really getting a hold of this kid. And uh, she's talking upside down and walking around the house like a spider and pissing all over everything and, you know, being a little devil as devils are. And uh, uh, finally he got the car started up and uh, he starts out the drive. It's a couple hour drive. You know, down there to where the Satan incident's going on, and and uh, he uh, he gets a flat tire, wouldn't you know it, on the way. Uh, he gets a flat tire, as he explained, and oh, the longer he's taken, the more Satan's getting there, and pretty soon she's flopping all around the house and everything, and cussing up a storm and. You know, you know, probably flying around like the Exorcist movie. I used to wonder in that movie when they tied the Exorcist lady to the bed or the girl. Uh, what if they didn't tie her down? Wonder if she would have floated off out the window or smashed a devil hole through the through the roof and went flying out of the house like a cackling jackal and sneak up behind other kids in the neighborhood and when they turn around to see who it is she'd twist her head around or if she'd hail a cab and hock demon loogies all over the cab driver and not pay him and when she got to 7-Eleven and went in and didn't pay for her big gulp and uh did the same thing, hocked those horrible demon loogies all over the attendant there. Demons do the most horrible things when they're possessing a child, and it's always a girl usually, because I guess it's just no fun to see a boy doing that shit. It's just kind of normal. Guys always are hocking loogies on stuff, you know, so... So anyways, uh, you know, he finally gets down there and he gets the situation handled pretty quickly you know gets the demon off on its way and delivers the daughter back to the to the family in pretty good shape and uh he's the hero of the day for i'm sure a small fee and then they opened the show for phone calls so uh I called up. I, I, I'd never talked to an exorcist before, and I thought this is my big chance to do just that. And I actually got through to the show. And I introduced myself and said, Hello, Mr. Exorcist Man. I, I loved your story. It was very enlightening, and he's... Well, I thank you, son, for calling in and talking to me like a preacher. And, like, preachers always talk to you like they're your dad or something, call you son and stuff. And uh, I said, well, I never really paid that much attention and didn't really realize that, that Satan and Beelzebub and the demons were so much more powerful than God and and Jesus and he said, oh, no, that's not what I was saying. Uh, I said, well, yeah, that's how I took it because uh, you talked about how you couldn't get there and uh, the devil was just getting stronger by the minute, right? And he said, oh, that's true. That is true. And I said, well, how come the devil could just get there all by himself? And... Uh, how come God needs a ride? Why did you have to give God a ride? Don't God got a car? Or does can he just go flying in there, you know, like uh like the devil? And he just got mad at me and told me I was a a blasphemous child of the devil and that was his only argument, so but the host of the show thought it was kind of funny and uh um and then i started thinking also uh 
you know, when the devil possesses somebody, apparently they do all those things. They, I've never seen it personally, but I've seen some movies and read about it. But, uh, you know, they, they hock loogies a lot and they spit and they, they cuss and bust up furniture and wreck the house and, you know, scare the dogs and everything. And, uh, barf all over everything and um how come uh if you're if you're that way when you're possessed by the devil how come if you're possessed by Jesus you're not um giving out fish and stuff and loaves of bread and puking out flower bouquets and rainbows and things like that and how come you're not the other way the opposite I mean in a world of equality, I, I would demand that from my uh, local preacher. So uh, I guess you could go on and worship whatever way you like, whatever religion, philosophy, stories to live by, mythologies. I like to think, because uh, you can believe, you get to pick what you believe in. Um, I'm believing in Bigfoot and spaceships and uh, those kind of things because it just seems more fun. Uh, It's a whole lot more fun than burning up in a lake of hell if I make a mistake. The worst thing could happen, Bigfoot will run up and get me. And uh, from what I understand, I've seen Harry and the Hendersons and all them movies. uh, Bigfoot's probably pretty cool. You know, and spacemen uh, seem okay. The worst that happens is they put something in your butt and you usually don't remember for a couple of weeks. And some people actually pay for that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, so uh, not to poke fun of a religion, but to poke fun of the people who uh, try to manipulate those beliefs because I... Uh, I can appreciate religion, and I can re- appreciate stories to live by, to behave. Because uh, people are bad animals, and we're born bad. That's obvious. Just watch babies. And uh, um, that's why we have so many laws, and that's why we uh, have so many religions, because we have to be scared into behaving and how to uh, be nice to each other. And it's really hard for us humans to do that. And I don't know why. It's the flaw of the animal. But that's what it is. And uh, and uh, just uh, enjoy it because y- y- that's what you are. And that's what I figure I am. And uh, just try to be nice to each other the best you can. And, and then Satan won't get in you and all that kind of stuff. So until then... Uh, I just hope I don't get in no possession.